guys what's going on big yacker here today we're going to be going over the rest of the specs and features video that yes i have been promising you guys for a while um this is going to be the transducer mount for the 2016 vibe seagos 13 zero i'm also going to be showing you guys how to briefly install a fish finder i'll show you i'll disassemble the plate disassemble the plate on the bottom of the kayak and show you guys my setup and the transducer that i have on there right now for the lawrence um, elite 3x series and so let's go ahead and get started all right guys so this is the look at my center hatch and this is what i have installed at the moment um, i have a gopro uh, box which i use it's really just a watertight box um, that I have actually drilled holes up underneath all of this mess and videotape stuff that I must have out on the water in order to make the channel possible, I guess. I have drilled four self-tapping stainless steel screws. I did drill pilot holes through this plastic, that way it didn't crack. I did center it in the middle of the, uh, the center console. Um, it butts right up at the cup holder right here um, and like I said it is watertight I did put some uh, marine goop in there that way uh, there it's it's even more watertight and you don't have water seeping through the pilot holes or you know by the stainless steel screws um, so I'm gonna take you off the mount real quick and I'm gonna show you guys I'm gonna show you guys these stainless steel screws right here um, and I actually the pilot holes that are already in the center console like these right here uh, for fish finders and whatnot I went ahead and I drilled the pilot holes in the plastic to fit four sections um, on the center console that way it's nice and secure and you also don't have the butt of the screws hanging out the possibility of cutting you inside the center console itself as you guys can see right here um, this is a ram ball mount um, that I will show you guys the rest of it here in a little bit. Um, I got this, it's actually a Hobie Ram Ball mount. Um, I got it off the Hobie website. They sent me a whole bunch of Hobie stuff with it. Um, but uh, the only reason I bought it from Hobie is because it was the cheapest that I could find because um, they were running a little sale. Um, but all it is is a, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a half inch uh, Ram Ball mount. Um, and that's going to allow me to move around my kayak, uh, move around my fish finder. Um, that way I can still see above my GoPro box um, and I can kind of adjust it. Uh, if my wife's in this kayak, she can stand up. I don't stand up in this kayak, but my wife can stand up in it. And um, if, if she by chance wants to use the fish finder, she can go ahead and tilt the screen back. That way she can see it as she's standing. This is just my mess of uh, wires. Uh, that are coming up out of the transducer scupper um, and going straight into my center console. So, let's see how we put the battery in the kayak. This is how my, I am currently running my setup for my battery. Um, and like I said, everything in here, I will leave a link in the description letting you guys know where I got it from. Um, I got most of this stuff from actually Tractor Supply, but I will find it on Amazon and I'll give you guys the description, uh, give you guys the links in the description below. Um, you do have a fuse. You're gonna have to run this on your red wire that you're gonna get out of your um, your little bundle of mess right here. Okay. Um, you're gonna want to go ahead and put a uh, a fuse um, in line with that red wire. You're gonna want to go get ahead and get some quick um, quick connect quick connect. Excuse me. Quick connect uh, snaps for your battery. Um, that way you can take them on and off pretty quick, um, you know, before, uh, you know, whenever you need to charge up your battery. And they slide right back on there. Nice tight connection. Um, now, what you guys are probably wondering is what this junk right here is. This is actually a spray-in foam. Um, I think they call it the great stuff or the good stuff, but it's just, you know, your ordinary spray foam insulation. Um, and how I did this, the battery actually slides right up out of there, no problem at all. And I can slide it right back in after I get done. Um, and now that the now that it is set uh, for I think about two days now, I can actually, if by chance, and I don't want you guys to get weary of messing up and then having all this uh, this spray and foam in your center console, and it's just it looks bad. 
Um, so I just want to let you guys know, after about two days and it completely, completely cures, you can put your battery in there immediately um, as long as you have a wrap on it, which I'll also go over here in a minute. Um, you can actually take this entire thing out of your kayak. Um, now I have just recently put down some marine goop um, because I have no reason to be uh, taking this in and out. I'm pretty much sure I want it to stay in there. Um, but like I said, you know, you take it out, you take the battery out, you go ahead and charge it really quick, and then you throw it back in there, and it does not move. Um, I've been out one time in the St. Mary's River um, and kind of drug it across the uh, drug it across the boat ramp just to kind of see if it would switch back and forth. And I also did some um, uh, crazy little maneuvers on the kayak and made sure, like, if a boat went by, I stayed in their wake. That way. You know there was a lot of movement inside the kayak and uh, whenever I got up out of the water it was in the same exact spot and this is without the marine goop it was in the same exact spot that I had originally placed it in before I went out on the uh, kayak trip so um, like I said spray and foam and the way I did this is I took um, a piece of cardboard let me take this off real quick and show you guys what I did was I took a piece of cardboard and I cut it to size right here. That way you didn't have any of the spray foam coming into the rest of the uh, the rest of the center console. Um, and then on the outside of this battery, take it out again. On the outside of this battery, along right here, and on the other sides, um, I placed a uh, material like a paper material. Um, cardboard material uh, type thing that I got from Walmart I placed it around the entire uh, entire battery um, using uh, electrical tape I left the top open the top doesn't really matter because you're not going to put that much spray foam to where it'll run over the top and I left the bottom um, I left the bottom open uh, because the spray foam's not going to get up underneath the battery because you're going to actually have the battery inside the uh, inside the center console when you spray in this, uh, the foam all right so then like I said I placed this inside I let the foam cure for eight hours with the battery inside then I took a knife a very long razor and I trimmed along the foam and the cardboard leaving the battery alone don't cut near the battery just cut the the cardboard that was around the battery and the foam you want to cut those apart at that point you can slide both the cardboard and the battery out of your foam and then you just take the uh, cardboard off your foam and you have a nice professional somewhat looking um, spray in foam for your uh, battery container slash holder now this is not waterproof it's not a waterproof box or anything like that but you do have a good seal on this new center um, center console lid from vibe um, along with you know just having this not move around um, you should be perfectly fine all right guys so now we're going to flip her over and uh, take a look at her bottom all right guys so this is your uh, transducer plate um, for the transducer mount, keeps everything enclosed, um, keeps the transducer from getting brushed up against, um, keeps it from switching an angle by getting hit on something. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. It's held on by four stainless steel screws. Now whenever you're uh, working with plastic, you want to make sure that you, you use power tools as little as possible. Um, for the most part, you want to use old good old muscle power with manual tools as you can see I'm just using a straight screwdriver Phillips head right, we're going to pop this plate off and now you can actually see inside the uh, transducer um, mount okay I have a Lowrance Elite 3 um, transducer on here if I'm not mistaken it's an 83 uh, 200 um, and it's held on by two stainless steel screws uh, now, one thing to add on all of your 2016 Ghosts that have this transducer mount through the scupper, um, they come standard with uh, Lowrance capable 
uh, holes that are already pre-drilled inside the kayak that way um, you don't have to worry about drilling anything extra inside if you follow the directions that are given to you when installing your transducer take the transducer for the elite three um, that comes standard it's an easy drill in to or screw into the pre-drilled pilots that come standard on the kayak um, now what a lot of people do is because Vibe does not send the screws for these guys right here what a lot of people have been doing is they've been taking two of the four screws that hold on the plate these are the same size screws and what they'll do is they'll take those screws and they'll mount one screw here and one screw here to hold on the plate and use the other two to put on their elite that's the inside guts nothing too special nothing too spectacular we'll go ahead and put this back on there and now we're going to go ahead and move uh, to the top of the kayak again all right guys so this is the actual fish finder um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for you guys, that way you guys can see it. Take you off your pedestal. And there it is. Now it's not going to get an accurate reading because it's sitting on a trailer and I'm pretty sure that the beams on my trailer are um, kind of throwing it off a little bit. Um, but it has power. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I'm going to show you guys the rest of this setup. Alright guys, so the rest of this setup, um, and the reason why I have it is, like I said, I have this GoPro box right here. That if I just had a standard mount, all my buttons would be blocked. I might be able to see my screen, but all my buttons would be blocked. And I wouldn't be able to position my fish finder wherever I wanted it. So this allows me to literally... Raise it all the way up to there, or drop it all the way down to here. And like I said, that would probably be your normal fish finder. You wouldn't even be able to see the buttons because they're behind the box. So I raise it up to about there, and that's where I like my fish finder. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know of anything that you guys did. Um, hit me up on Facebook, send me some pictures, uh, post up on Big Yacker TV on Facebook, and uh, show me your setup for the Vibe Seaghost 13, whether it be the 2016 model or the 2015 model. If you guys want more videos, make sure you subscribe, it's very important, and you guys will get notifications every time I put it out. Also like my fa uh, Facebook page, um, I put a lot of content on there that you guys might not get on YouTube. So until next time, keep your lines tight and be safe out there on the water.